in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you how I use tarot cards for self-care and not religious purposes. Now, when you think of tarot cards, you probably, if you grew up in the kind of upbringing I had, it's of the devil, you're welcoming evil spirits, Satan is being entertained and happy to see you messing with this stuff, and AKA you're going to hell. But in reality, there's different ways to understand the history of the tarot card cards, and it's really important too. Because if you understand the history and its purpose and its, you know, current realities, there's there's so many things that are taken out of context, are used that they're not supposed to be used. You know, I'll give an example of an item that, you know, is there's nothing wrong with that actual item, but it could be used for good or bad, like a gun, for example, or a steak knife. There's multiple purposes and many people can take something and twist its original purpose, right? And in this video, I'm gonna share with you the history of the tarot cards, the different ways people use them, and the way I utilize tarot cards as a Christian mystic. So stick around if this is the kind of stuff you're interested in. If not, if you just like my LSD and marijuana Kratom videos, then Bye-bye for now. Okay, so the history of tarot cards. Do you know that it used to be a game, a kid game that little kids would play? It wasn't even a spiritual thing created by some possessed person that Christians want you to think. It was literally a game. Like freaking uh what do you call it tax ball that tack game pick up sticks you know it was literally a game kids would entertain themselves with tarot cards were not originally used for any divination or occult purposes rather they were used for diversion and as a game the transition from traditional playing cards to tarot cards in italy was more of a stylistic change with the cards being used similarly. It wasn't until the 18th century that a Frenchman wrote a book linking tarot cards to divination. He assigned meaning to each card, leaning on astronomy and the elements, as well as taking inspiration from the Egyptian book of Thoth. He also assigned specific order and spread to the cards that continue to be used today. By the 1900s, tarot became popular in the United States with the creation of the Rider Waite deck Americans were primed to purchase, and the deck made the leap across the Atlantic to become the most popular tarot reading option. But honestly, with the history of the cards, it was used as a kind of mental self-help therapeutic time. You sit down and you reflect, because each of these cards represents something, a part of life, part of living. And so it gives you a chance to kind of take these key notes or these key words and reflect on them personally into your life. So in a way, it's like journaling. You use tarot cards to reflect and do some self-care. It's like shadow work. You use something like a card that represents something and you reflect on it. And in a sense, because we are just, many are just naturally spiritual beings, we attribute something like this to our spiritual life. For example, the Page of Wands. This represents adventure, excitement, fresh ideas, energeticness, fearlessness, discovery, extrovert. That's what this card represents. So when you look at this card and you're self-reflecting on it, you're like, well, maybe where in my life am I this way? What brings this out of me? And then maybe from there you'll realize, oh, when I take a bath or when I do self-care, which I'm doing right now, I feel more fearless and energized. Ah, oh, maybe I need to do more of this. This is helping me realize that. 
So then you personalize it, and then eventually this deck becomes like a comfort, a self-care ritual that you do that's therapeutic for you to self-reflect. It's the same way as reading a self-help book or getting a book full of journal prompts. These are your journal prompts. These are key words that help you reflect on things that you would otherwise not reflect on. And some might know, but if the card is upside down, that represents something entirely. Like the hermit, upside down means isolation, loneliness, being stuck, repeating past mistakes, antisocial. And so this is totally, purely something that is therapeutic for people like me and not something I take any like, oh my God, this is fact, this is gonna happen, this is my future. But everyone's different. Everyone uses these things differently. Let me take you with me on how I use tarot cards for self-reflecting instead of a journal book full of journal prompts. I'll share with you how I use the deck as my journal prompts. They recommend shuffling it really well before you begin your self-care ritual is what I'll call it. Just like you would shuffle a deck of cards, this one you want to make sure it gets a good amount of shuffling. And then you do what they call a split. For me, and there's different various techniques, but I'm going to do a simple one that works for my self-care. The first one represents past issues that we might be currently struggling with, but something from the past. And the middle represents current struggles. And then the last third one represents future, like on the horizon, struggles. And each card means certain things, like the Eight of Swords represents self-imposed prison of thoughts, limiting and negative thoughts, victim mentality, trapped, helpless. So considering that first card represents the past, it's very much aligned with what the card means. It's represents things I might not have gotten over yet that's consuming me today, which then you move on to the middle card, which represents communication, mental agility, alertness, thirst for knowledge, and then the last meaning, self-love, respect, unconditional love, courage, that being the future. And you just sit and you meditate, which I meditate on these three things and what they could imply in my life currently in the moment. I'll jot it down, write my notes in a journal, and just reflect on these things throughout the week.